died in the line of service in Scotland where I was born. It made me want to fight crime. We Never Sleep was my company's slogan. Hence the open eye in our logo. I was Abraham Lincoln's friend and personal bodyguard. Once I even saved his life breaking up a plot to kill him before Lincoln was inaugurated. Sadly, in 1861, I also said to President Lincoln, Sir, I beg of you, no matter what the circumstances, never attend the theater. In addition to being a nemesis for criminals, I also detested slavery and ran an underground railroad station well known to escaping slaves. If you go to the United States Capitol, you will see a sculpture of three strong women. Susan B. Anthony, Elizabeth Cady Stanton, and me, Lucretia Mott. I'm included in this marble carving to the U.S. government because of my unshakable beliefs in the rights of women, the quest for peace, and my opposition to slavery. Look at my determined gaze. My life was filled with determination to stand up for others. My fellow Quakers weren't always so understanding in my willingness to confront violence. call me Buck. Can you believe at one time I sold 40% of the cigarettes in this country? Even though I died in 1925, you are still paying me money each month for electricity because I started Dick Energy. I was married twice and I have a beautiful daughter named Doris. I had so much money that I took $40 million and started the Dick Endowment. $40 million then is like $430 million now. Part of that money was used to start Duke University. I am James B. Duke. Imagine at the age of five years old, your Native American pioneer grandfather sending you to live with a military white family. Imagine the major white teaching you how to read and write English. Imagine your heart being pulled back to your people. Imagine the major breaking a promise and killing three of your own people. What would 
what you do? What I did was fight for Native American rights. Even though I was young, sensitive, and confused, I had a scorching hot temper when it came to being mistreated by our foe. This earned me respect among our people, and eventually my own father did something unheard of, made me chief. Chief Sarah won the cup. Later in my life, I gave 300 lectures without 18 notes. Every speech was different and filled with passion for the plight of my people. Music lovers call me Master Scott Joplin, the Ragtime King. Sounds so powerful, doesn't it? I discovered the power of music and that with my abilities and determination, I could create musical bliss and capture an entire country for my Ragtime King piano melodies. It's almost impossible not to smile and tap your foot listening to the entertainer or my maple leaf rag. In my lifetime, most people didn't even know I was the composer of these tunes. But my tricky syncopations and ragtime rhythms ensure that my music will be played long after I was gone. So today, if you hear a piano player's steady beat of their left hand and the right hand's bouncy melody, think of me, Scott Joplin, a true entertainer. <coughs> Cindy's the homeless, tempest toast to me. I left my lamp beside the golden door. Do you recognize these lines? You do know that these words are on the Statue of Liberty in New York Harbor, right? But what you probably don't know is that my name, Emma Lazarus, is at the bottom of the poem, called the New Colossus. I lived on West 14th Street in New York City, and I had five sisters that always looked out for me and one weird brother. I was homeschooled by a private tutor, even learning Shakespeare as a 13-year-old girl, as fluent in French, German, and Italian. In my teens, the Civil War raged. I just had to write a poem about this tragic time. In 1867, a famous poet, William Cullen Bryant, said that my poems were better than any he remembered. Not bad for an aspiring writer at the age of 18. Another famous poet, Ralph Waldo Emerson, asked me if he could be my mentor. I said yes. Oh, and also, sad to say, I never did have the opportunity to see the Statue of Liberty. Do you know what the alternating current is? Are you sure you're not mixing that up with Thomas Edison's direct current? Shocking, I know, but I was just trying to give you good bolt. No, a good jolt, since there's such an electric charge to this audience. <laughs> Someone unplug me. I grew up in the European country of Croatia. As a child, I was more comfortable around animals and people. I, I, I like making little inventions, and I also love to read them. After graduating from college <coughs> in Europe, I then came to America hoping I could get a job in the world of science. I met Thomas Edison and battled with him here in the war of the currents. In this corner, we have Thomas Edison. Boo. And in this corner, we have Nikola Tesla. Yay! I finally won with my alternating current feet his direction. The alternating current was safer and more efficient. After that, he tried to prove my invention was unsafe by making an electric chair. We weren't the best of friends, Edison and me, but we did both stun the world with our inventions. the wealthy Vanderbilt family and was named after my great uncle. My name is George Washington Vanderbilt II, and you know, might know me because it was my gift to build the Biltmore State in Asheville, North Carolina. Even today, the Biltmore State is the largest family-owned house in the United States of America, but five white houses there. I was born in New York, 1862, but I started traveling at a young age. I love books and learned to speak eight languages. Would you believe I read 3,150 until I died at 51 years old? As an adult, I was not interested in working for the family business. I loved traveling and seeing the world. That's how I got the inspiration of the Biltmore House. Christmas Eve of 1895 was one of the best days of my life, because it was the day I opened the Biltmore House to my family and friends. I was opened as a young child in, in, in 
and lived in Newport, Rhode Island with my grandparents. When they moved on, when they died, I moved to Paris because the cost of living was less expensive. That is where I met the world's most eligible bachelor's, George Vanderbilt. We married in 1898. I love playing time with my husband and daughter at the Bumble in after North Carolina. When my beloved husband died, I did not sit back and eat bonbons and enjoy the view of the of the beautiful mountains. Instead, I compared the influence of agriculture to the entire state of North Carolina by becoming the head of the state fair. My name is Edith Rainbow. What a lovely garden, people. Catherine Reynolds is a very common name, but I'm not common at all. You might know me because I started with Miller Gardens and Village. made me want to have a very clean, healthy home as an adult. When I was in college, I said, when I marry, I, I will go to Europe on my wedding trip and bring home a wonderful work of art. Then I shall buy a great estate and have a thousand cattle on hill with flowers all around. When I was 10, RJ gave me a gold bracelet and joked that he would marry me. But what he did not know is that he actually was. <laughs> I, I am most proud of that I accomplished what I said I would in college. Plus, I gave lots of money to charity. Unfortunately, I died at the age of 44 of an embolism three days after the birth of my fifth child. <coughs> Under my name, Matthew Henson, it notes that I live to be 89 years old. That's a lot of living for anyone. I'm sure I had my share of adventures. I love adventures and I love the sea. But little did I dare dream that one day I would become one of the first people to discover the North Pole. When both my parents died, I actually walked 40 miles to pursue my career as a sailor. I wish racism didn't play a part in my life, but it did. Well, let me just say, because of my skin color, having been called names and having things dirty was not easy to cope with. But my good fortune led me to being an Arctic explorer with one of the best naval engineers, Robert Perry. We became best friends on top of the world.
Charlie Spencer Chaplin and honorary degree, I was thrilled. That same year, in 1975, when the Queen, Queen of England made me a knight, I was speechless. That actually came pretty easily to me since I started with 80 silent films. <laughs> Just think, going to a movie today with no words? That was my life. I started early at the age of five when my parents encouraged me to act. In fact, when my mother lost her singing voice acting, I actually rushed on stage and finished her song, much to the audience's delight. I was the Johnny Depp of my time and won an Oscar. If you get a chance to watch me in the movie The Tramp, you'll probably recognize my mannerisms, the way I walk and the way I look. 